Victory Royale, yeah, Fortnite, we bout to get down. get down. Ten kills on the board right now. What's up, guys? Today's video is significantly longer, as I was watching my video in the shower and realizing that the context of playing the songs for longer actually does matter. The VOD was not taken down or blocked universally, so I will be keeping in a lot of the song uh, to see if there, if the extra time and context does help with the video, so feedback is appreciated. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad taste in music, and today we're going to be discussing awkward cursing in music. I asked you guys a while ago for some examples of awkward profanity, and we're going to be going over them today. Now, music is about provoking some sort of feeling and emotion. And I feel like with cursing, it is a very quick and easy way to do this. I, I guess I'm more specifically referring to things that aren't hip-hop. You know, it's like a more regular thing in rap music for, for swearing, but like in a pop song, for example, right? When an artist goes out of their way to swear, it usually, me like, changes the tone in some sort of way. Something I wasn't considering when I said this and when I canceled out a lot of hip hop uh, in the conversation, a lot of the most awkward swearing that I've heard in music has been from hip hop, but it's mostly been from people in hip hop who had no clue what the fuck they were doing. People who are clearly oddballs out who are swearing as a way of trying to fit in, in a way. I, I feel like I kind of just brushed this off, and I really hope that if I do another video like this, I'll be able to show some examples of that. Swearing can either make or break a song. Sometimes you could have profanity slid into a song in a very proper way, or sometimes you could just come off as an edgy child. Uh, saying a curse word just to make the song feel even less mature. With that being said, uh, did I give an example? I might have. I did. I had a Jealous by Nick Jonas, the clean version I prefer over the original. The clean version is slick. It's a pretty pop song that rolls off the tongue and feels super catchy. The explicit version sounds so unbelievably forced. You're so fucking beautiful and everyone wants your sex. Sweet mother of God. Nick Jonas, please stop for the love of God. Okay? Uh, I'll, I'll play this one for you guys for example, alright? Now, the song is very slick. You, of course, are listening to the clean version of this song. It all just kind of works in a very simple frame, right? But as soon as you get to the explicit version, then you have a bit of an issue. And let me play the explicit version for you. So, the entire song is very slick, it's very pretty, but then all of a sudden you get to the hook where it's, and every, <laughs> you're so fucking beautiful, and everybody wants your sex, are you kidding me? Okay, see, that's where it takes a little bit too far. Awkward swearing, that is what it, the, today is all about. So, thank you guys, I, I'm glad, because yeah, the explicit version of the song is real, and most people don't like the explicit version for that exact reason. Uh, it is absolutely a bro moment, yeah. It sounds like they made the clean version first. Yeah, because it sounds so much more appropriate. So, that is what today is about. I'm really hoping you guys give some good examples because I'm really excited about this topic. Uh, with that being said... Like the Feeling by Mac Miller, Kendrick Lamar, and Iman Omari. Mac smoothly raps throughout most of the song and Kendrick has an awesome verse with even a little rap harmony section. Uh, the song begins to come to a close after his verse, though the song is just under 5 minutes long and he's done at 4.18. After the beat peters out around 4.22, at the last 30 seconds, they're filled with women moaning. And one of the women whispers, I want you to fuck me. 
So it counts as awkward profanity. This caught me so off guard the first time I heard it and all I could do was laugh. I'm an Omari is the producer of the song and I don't know what compelled him to unleash his perfectly cut moans into the compilation, but the madman did it and Mac and Kendrick signed off on it. I usually mute or skip this part. I recently found a moan free version of the song on YouTube, which is helpful. I don't know what this song is, but I got to say this sounds hilarious and uh, consider me very curious about this. Whoops, didn't mean to click on that. Close your eyes. So watch you do the macarena somewhere out by Pasadena. Love a drug that everybody here just trying to get a taste of. You a waste of the space that you take up living. This time around, I'm not kidding. I had an intuition about these women and suspicion. Got me looking at shit different. How a man in my position is. Sometimes I wake up, up in the morning, make up, wrap this much the makeup off my bit, soon as she's on it, take up hours on my day just to find power shit to say, but you won't hear it, even if your ears was pissed with beats by Dre, I'm with your shelly, she die eventually, oh so what's your calling, you left your phone. Uh oh, it's coming up, I see it. It won't stop. Can't fight this feeling. It won't stop. Oh god, it <laughs> wow. Uh oh. Uh, fuck me. Uh, <laughs> uh, what you do? Fuck me. Uh, uh, okay, so I think I see the problem here with this song. Um, yeah, so the entire song is a euphoric feeling of like, uh, like, the vibe is incredible here. You could tell that it's around, like, 2012, 2013 from just Kendrick's verse alone, sounding like it's out of his Good Kid, Mad City era. Mac Miller is amazing. The beat's amazing on this track. But I might I might see what you're, what you're saying here with this ending. That is, um, rarely in this song did it ever feel like that was a, a sexual feeling. So this outro does ex feel extremely awkward. I think this is a wonderful example uh, you got everyone here riled up. Uh, you got some, I mean, the stream numbers just went down. You got some people running away to go do something else uh, after hearing that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh. Stranger. Dedication to my ex by Lloyd featuring Lil Wayne and Andre 3000 is probably the best song he's ever made. The instrumental is booming and well produced. Lloyd's vocals are classy and reminiscent, though not at the level of an earlier Michael Jackson. And the tone of the song is extremely tongue in cheek given the bitter breakup song it is. However, a few notable changes are made between the clean and explicit versions, specifically in the chorus around the 49 second mark. It plays throughout the song from the start as well, but the chorus is drastically affected in ways that need to be heard rather than described. 100% recommended the clean version it is much more of a respectable R&B song and easily Lloyd's best attempt at an anthem. Now, I'm not fully sure what this is, so I am quite excited to check it out. It's a major move right here, baby. You gotta get with it and get lost, you understand? Yeah. Oh, it sounds familiar. He's a little desperate. Send a, a text message, girl. Stop. Is the wrong song? Oh, you're right, it is. Wow, how did I only realize that now? Either way, I'm vibing. I'm gonna let this one play out. It does sound like uh, Michael Jackson. Oh God. Huh. <laughs> you know, I tried giving it the benefit of the doubt, but. Wow, poor him. Okay, yeah, this is, um, I gotta say, maybe he is going a little hard with the, you know, the song is very explicitly about the pussy changing, right? You know, let's listen to the clean version. Let's see what the clean version is like, okay? Crying 
That love and done change. Okay, what? This is a lot smoother. Hold on. Bro, this shit like 10,000 times better. What the fuck? Okay, great example here because it is, it's a lot classier by saying loving instead of that pussy done change, you know, because then it's about a much deeper feeling, right? The song all of a sudden feels like it's really coming from the soul with just a small little change there. I gotta say, that is a slick, clean edit that I think is significantly better than the, uh, than the explicit version. This is a wonderful example. I would listen to this clean version again. Yes! Oh, shit, nice! She used to squeeze me, and it's your love and girl. Where's that, baby? Damn, darling, do change your all. I'm your number one fan belt. They are not important. Huh. I don't use a cordless. A microphone to board them. They don't feel real to me. Meaning, Damn! Others built on me. You the prime on the line. Being green box when they couldn't afford a Ford. Clean socks, scooting across the floor in your grandma's house. Hand on your mouth. And your ex-boyfriend should thank me that I took you off his hands. No, I can't bring another beach to the sand. And no, I am well aware that you can bring another <laughs> All right, Lane. What you gonna do? That's my Corey Feldman inclusion. What you gonna do? Wayne? Wait, Wayne's just in the background of the song? You know what? It's okay. Andre fucking killed it. He was the, the, the king of this shit. I'm okay with that. Um, that was spectacular. I thought, I'm actually gonna save that song. Let me, let me just check and see if this, this version right here is the clean version. How you do me like that, baby? And whatever, who cares? Anyways, really strong song. Uh, clean version I like significantly better. Wonderful example. Seriously, it's not bad. So now hopefully you can see, at least with a couple of these examples, the difference between something that's explicit and something that's clean, how it actually can matter in uh, many circumstances, like the ones that you're seeing here. There's another one that I'm thinking in specific- <laughs> Dr. Theo just says fuck. There's another one that I'm thinking in specific that I know is going to show up. Um, I'll let you guys know more about that when it comes up. Oh. Fuck it, I Don't Want You Back by, uh, what is that, Iman? The song went number one in 2004 and is loaded with the most profane and juvenile use of the most useful curse word in the English language. It's literally about the singer standing up to a girl that he is pretending wants him back, but in real life actually wouldn't leave her alone. I don't know what this is. I'm gonna be honest. Bro, what the hell is this? Okay, well, from the sound of it, the song being called Fuck It already is like... Oh, okay, I see a bit of an issue here. I see a bit of an issue. If I'm looking at the lyrics here, it does seem like, um, wow. Wow. Fuck what I said. It don't mean shit now. Fuck the presents. Might as well throw them out. Fuck all those kisses. They didn't mean jack. Oh my God. Fuck you, you Jack, play the back. Okay, I think I get the point here. Um, yeah, this song is... Look, when you're in a mood like this, where you're just angry and pissed off, I guess the, the throwing of profanity is whatever, but again, with this very soft tone, it does come off a little bit awkward. I'm curious to hear the clean version of this song, if there is one. Pretty much what I expected. All right. Oh, wow. This is less profanity and more just awkwardly explicit lyrics, but the infamous domestic abuse breakdown on the down with the sickness comes to mind. I actually like this example, because again, it isn't like, you know, using the word fuck, but it is a very awkward moment in a song. Now, Down With The Sickness is a metal song, uh, but even so, the randomness and explicitness of the breakdown, the overuse of swearing, and the fact that it does not correspond with any other part of the song just makes it seem less like a dark and haunting look into child abuse and more like a bad attempt at being edgy just by saying dark things and swearing a lot. Now, allow me to play the only real version of this song. Hold on. Here we go. Yeah. 
Oh, you're telling me that's awkward in the middle of this song? That is just an L take. I'm sorry, but it's also a very homophobic take. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to steal your soul. You know how it goes, okay? <laughs> Am I the only one? Here tonight, shaking. Am I the only one by Aaron Lewis? Politics aside, where uh, the stained frontman wails about why he's the only one willing to bleed for America. Let's talk about a giant elephant in the room. The chorus part where he screams the fuck at his TV on top of his lungs just rubs me in the wrong way, but the way he delivers it's so hilarious at the same time. What the hell is this? Consider me uh, intrigued. God, wait. Oh, God, what the fuck is this? hell is this? Am I the only one here tonight? Shaking my head and thinking something ain't right. Is it just me? Am I losing my mind? Am I standing? Of course, this song came out in 2021. God damn it. The fuck in my TV for telling me, yeah, you telling me that I'm the only one willing to fight. Who still gives a shit and worries about guys lighters up, please. As they try to undo, please pay respect to our national anthem. Something more, am I the only one? So, the entire point of swearing in this song is supposed to be a uh, a climactic explosion of emotions like you can't fucking take it anymore he's yelling he can't hold it in anymore and look it probably works for the song but i gotta say the subject matter of this track this whole thing is awkward reminds me of this other great song that i love it's called take a knee my ass a hood classic if you will one of the best patriotic songs of our generation i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united, united states, states. Of America, I see somebody, somebody on TV take their stand or bend a knee, whether it's on AstroTurf or grass. I think of those whose freedom was not free, and I say, Take a knee, my ass. Bum, bum, bum. I stand up for. Oh yeah, that's a good example. You know what, let's do that example, why not? Ladies and gentlemen, off the new album from Muse is a song called We Are Fucking Fucked, which I think is one of the most awkward uses of swearing I've ever heard in my life. With this whole album being as overdramatic as it is about literally nothing, and people saying that the tone is supposed to be very ridiculous, this song is probably the prime example of it being so ridiculous, you can't take a single second of it seriously. The moment that they say We Are Fucking Fucked, the song is ruined. And over. I don't even care for this track outside of it, but man, as soon as that happens, it is donezo for me. This is our favorite news album, not that origin of Sim Mid Tree bullshit. Do I need to say any more? It's pretty bad. 
It just sounds terrible. It's awkward as a motherfucker, dude. I gotta tell you a little something about yourself. Ooh, hold on. Here's a good one. Treasure by Bruno Mars. While I like the song and I don't mind the beginning myself, I always forget about it and it catches me every time and everyone else off uh, off guard when I play it for a, on a playlist at a family gathering at work. That's right. This song. Uh, I never knew about this intro because I only heard it on the radio, But and some other people might be surprised by this, but Treasure starts off with, uh, with profanity that does not really add to the song whatsoever. Baby squirrel use a sexy motherfucker. And I'm guessing this version is the one without it. Yeah, see, they have literally two versions right here on Spotify, right next to each other. You have the version with it and the version without it. The only difference. Baby squirrel use a sexy motherfucker. Give me your, give me your, give me your attention, baby. Yeah, for some reason it's there. Text to speech, cursing, and a pop out. Strange. Either way, good example. Really good example. I got too many memories getting in the way of me. I'm about to go down your heart and all. Stay frosty, royal milk tea. Oh, oh God. Off of Fall Out Boy's Mania was always a weird one to me. Around the 30 second mark before the chorus, Patrick drops lyrical genius. That is, are you smelling that shit? Yeah, you feel that. This line comes out of nowhere and always left a bad taste in my mouth whenever I first listened to it. At one point, I liked this album. I have not heard this album in a long time, dude. Is this the new muse? Yeah, that is very awkward. You see, the issue with uh, swearing in an instance like this is you're building something very epic, and as soon as you say something like the word shit, you can just sort of sequence break uh, a, a track just instantly. Are you smelling that shit? It's just not a very pleasant phrase in the first place. But if you could imagine, if they just would have sold that off as something that isn't so uh, edgy and punchy, it probably could have at least been a little bit more subtle. It maybe worked a little bit, but man, I'm out of it as soon as that happens. Uh, wow. You only get what you agree. Are you smelling that shit? Are you smelling I'm the shit! I look like a toilet, eh? I'm the shit, eh? I look like a toilet! That's what I think when I hear that. I'm the shit, I'm farting. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. so I got the new Liz track. Have you heard it? Did you like it? No, I hate it. Yeah. You hate it. I hate it. Liz Fair's awkward fun style album where she she has a song called You Hate It, but the line is, Wow, oh, you're being a pianus, pia, penis colada, that is. I swear on holy high Jehovah that made me simultaneously laugh, cringe, and speechless on what I heard. That Liz Fair album is a trip and a half. I've heard about fun style. This is, um, fun style is one of the most infamous albums of all time. You have her Exile in Guyville album, which was pretty much her you know, her big breakout, and then you had her self-titled, which Pitchfork infamously gave a zero, and then she decided to outdo herself by releasing Fun Style, which is, uh, I've, I've seen Todd in the Shadows video on it. Didn't look very good, admittingly. Hey, so I got the new Liz track. Have you heard it? Did you like it? No, I hate it. You, you hated it? I hate it. You, yeah, you hated it, huh? I, uh, I hated it, too. I really hate it. Oh, you, what oh, you, you gonna really do? What you gonna do? Uh oh, we don't agree on it. Uh oh, I totally love it. Uh oh, I think I'm a genius. Uh -oh, I'm a genius, could have made that. You're being a penis. Colada, that is. Oh my god! Oh god, that is. It's like you think this song isn't bad. You try it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, God. That's bad. Yeah, I think I've heard enough of that. Good example. Oi. Bring it on.
Hot Dog by Limp Biscuit. This is basically the musical equivalent of hanging out with a 12-year-old who just discovered the word fuck and uses it every chance he gets. All right. It's off of this incredible album. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water. Bring it on. Wow, I think I've heard enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Wow, that's bad. Fucking perfect by Pink comes to mind. Not really crazy about either version of the song, but adding random f bombs to the chorus doesn't add any meaningful emphasis. Uh, which is what I think the songwriters must have been going for, but really it's not special nor impactful at all and just sounds like a much, uh, it sounds much cheesier as a result. Man, fuck that shit. We are not men. Are we hot dog flavored water? Made a wrong turn once or twice. Like you're nothing, you are perfect. Now, tell me that that doesn't go smoother than you're fucking perfect. Come on, that's, dude, it, it's, it, does it get more unnecessary than that? It actually destroys the, like you're nothing, you're fucking literally three syllables in a spot that needs two just to throw in an F-bomb. That is actually definitively awkward. Let's listen to the clean version. Made of Pretty please, don't you ever, ever feel Like you're less than, less than perfect Pretty, pretty please, if you ever, ever feel Like you're nothing, you are perfect Yeah, no, I, I'm, I, I'd like to add in that the intention of this song makes a lot of sense with it being called fucking perfect, supposed to be like an anthem for people who really feel out of place, like the F-bomb is supposed to really emphasize that they are perfect. I understand why it was done, and I want to add some context to that. Um, I believe that I'm definitely not the demographic for this song, but the more that I think about it, the more it makes sense in terms of what it's trying to do. But definitely towards me, me listening to this song, it does come off as awkward. It's literally right here. See, I sing it like that. I'm telling you, I don't even remember what the original, or I didn't remember what the clean version sounded like, but they literally split it up into you are perfect because it sounds cleaner. It sounds smoother, less than, less than perfect. Reiterating that part makes it work. It actually is so much better, the clean version here. Again, great example, unnecessary swearing. Yes! All right, ladies and gentlemen, this was the one I was looking for. I've already given it a like. Uh, I know you want me. Tonight I'm loving you. Enrique Iglesias, a catchy mid-2010s EDM song that my mom really liked. So she went online to download it and played around the house. And when she got uh, ready for work this morning, only she accidentally downloaded the original non-radio-friendly -radio, uh, version of this song. 
And tonight I'm fucking you. That's right. Both of these songs are identical except for the hook. Which, by the way, the F word is pretty awkwardly delivered uh, because it comes out of nowhere. And I just vividly remember my mom being so embarrassed when she heard it full blast in our kitchen. That's really funny. Um, now, I am in the same boat with this because I've agreed with this for a very long time. When I first heard this song, I heard it on the radio and I was like, this is a very catchy, fun little tune. And then when I looked it up, I was like, this is unbearably cringe the explicit version i will show you as it does not match the tone at all and when you hear the clean version you'll be like yes that is smooth that works so much better hey, hey, pitbull neo I know dale it's the worldwide Here we go, I love the pre-chorus here. Now, here's the issue with this song. There is a problem with replacing the word loving with fucking in this instance. Fucking is a significantly more aggressive word. And by saying tonight I'm fucking you, as, as opposed to this girl tonight I'm loving you, there's a significant loss of charm to this song. Seriously, listen to the version tonight I'm loving you. It's, I'm telling you, the entire tone has changed. It's no longer rapey, no. It all of a sudden feels like a, a smooth proposition, you know? It's like, girl, I'm loving you. It's like, even if he's in his own world about it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be something that's projected, you know what I mean? It is so much better. It is so much cleaner. It's it, cleaner, literally, as in, like, it, it's a cleaner feeling. By taking away the profanity, you completely remove any sort of uh, extra you know, unintended consequences of a song called Tonight I'm Fucking You, you know? Either way, it's a motherfucking banger. S plus example, one of the best examples you could possibly ask for. Love this, thank you for this. Exactly what I was thinking with this kind of video. Was the knight in shining armor in your mood? All Time Low by John Bellion is the perfect example of secondhand embarrassment. Even though it fell through the entire song, it's aggravated thanks to the entire gross and off- The always gross and off-putting line, You're the reason I'm alone in masturbate. Not necessarily profanity, but extremely awkward. This is a wonderful example. As I reacted to this album, and I had no idea this was the original line, You're the reason I'm- I don't even remember what he says beforehand because this was so shocking. It was like, I, I got to show you the clip of where I heard this because, um. What the f***? <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, the clean version. That I'm at an all time. Sounds like AJR. AJR pretty much ripped off their entire shtick from John Bellion and uh, 21 Pilots. I'm not a huge John Bellion fan, but I will say that, like, as time has gone on, I feel like he is, like, if, if you wanted to listen to a likable version of AJR, Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Bradley here. I want to uh, to stop the video real quick to mention this comment right over here. What kind of asshole names his album The Human Condition? Fuck you. Now, this comment right here is why I haven't been able to be, be getting sleep. 
because of idiots like this who think that they're saying something really funny with some bullshit like that. Uh, it's this attitude that I want to move away from with this channel, not towards. So please, if you see some shit like that, they are the outlier. They are the people who we are looking down on in this community. This shit is disgusting. All right, thank you. This guy is living in his own Disney fantasy and does a lot of similar things, but this is basically like getting the fruit from the tree instead of getting the rotten fruit uh, that was stolen and delivered across seas. This is, I would say, significantly better than anything I've ever heard from AGR. You know why? Because it's a listenable song. The, and the masturbating line is fucking terrible. I, I, I'm curious if I could... Was the prototype like three stacks on that CD? An example of the perfect candidate now. All your girlfriends say that you don't want to see me. You're the reason that I just can't concentrate. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, that was the original. You hear how smooth that goes across? You're the reason that I just can't concentrate as a- Like, dude, you're the reason I'm alone and masturbate. Out of fucking nowhere, dude. Dude, like the, the change of pace, that is what I was so used to hearing. To, to have, you're the reason I'm alone and masturbate out of fucking nowhere, dude. What the fuck? Like how? You're the reason I'm alone and masturbate. What the? <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm stroking it right now. Yeah, though, it's actually so odd. I mean, sure, it's supposed to be like, oh, I'm at an all time low, but like you already got that across through the song. Waste time with the masterpiece, to waste time with the masterpiece. Uh, you should be wrong. Cake by the Ocean by DNCE. It's basically just a really fun mid 2010s pop song. Uh, that's basically one giant euphemism, but I will say that the radio version's much better than the original only because of some unnecessary F bombs in the chorus on the original. This is another one that I agree with that a lot of people agree with. One time you, they played this song at the gym and they didn't play the clean version. That's the issue though, is when you have a song that feels complete as a clean version, like, but but for some reason there's profanity just randomly plastered in the original like this one, you have that effect. That kind of shit does happen because it sounds better on the radio. Now, what did they replace uh, fucking crazy with? Simple. Now, crazy crazy, I do believe sounds smoother. I think it, let's go crazy crazy. I mean, crazy crazy does make sense. You're going crazy crazy, you know? Fucking crazy is supposed to be the exact same thing, but I feel like it's sacrificing, again, that smooth vibe. It's supposed to, I guess, maybe emphasize that the song is a euphemism, but I think because of the weight of this song, the popularity of this song, it does matter a lot more in this instance. This is not as extreme of an example as, like, many other ones, especially, I mean, because this is, this is one of the Jonas Brothers who's in this group, by the way. Uh, if you compare it with, uh, with their counterpart, Nick Jonas, on the song Jealous, you know what I mean? You're so fucking beautiful and everyone wants your sex. Eh, you know, fucking crazy. Maybe that's not the most uh, awful thing in the world. So, yeah. I wear a mask with a smile for hours at a time. Stare at the ceiling. When Dream goes, yeah, I'm okay, bitch, in mask, it makes my stomach churn. If he didn't swear, then this song would go from a zero to a 0 0.5. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> this shit hot, boy. I wear a mask with a smile for hours at a time. Stare at the ceiling while I hold back what's on my mind. And when they ask me how I'm doing. You know what? Let's just skip to the meat and potatoes. Uh. But I've been places, so I'm okay-ish, so I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay, bitch, fact is... I mean, this whole song is bad, but I gotta agree. 
edginess out of nowhere for a dream song is just the the fucking cherry on top i gotta say you know he felt like he was really putting it out there for his child audience my god i like how they turn the mixing on the vocals so you can't so you can hear him say bitch way louder than the normal vocals so i'm okay ish so i'm okay yeah i'm okay bitch yeah but they still don't like the compression on everything is still fucked up you can't even hear him say bitch like properly because it just cuts off his vocals at the tail end because if you think about it bitch right like ch is significantly quiet quieter than the bit you know you usually are letting off the uh it, whatever it's, it's significantly quieter tail and it literally just gets buried so you you wouldn't even be able to tell that he says bitch if you didn't have the lyrics right in front of you which i think is also very funny Fuck Time by Green Day. The title of the song says it all. Also, why? how did they think this was a good idea? What? Fuck Time? Is it like, fuck time? Or is it like, it's fuck time, girl? It's Morbin time. I heard the feedback. I'm a poser with a guitar and a choker. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's really bad. Oh my god. Oh. Wow. It's girl, it's fuck time. Yeah. Wow. That's sad. Okay. Let's uh let's just pretend that didn't happen. Good example. I'm kinda scared to drop this album. Let's push it back another week. Oh no, oh no, 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 dude. And so it begins. Next up, Forever by AJR. Never has a more legendary and iconic song grace the earth. It's the Morbius of songs, except for when it drops the F bomb. I'd expect a much richer, nuanced, and sophisticated lyrics from the prodigies who could remix a mountain lion in heat uh, to create a mess. Oh my god. Jack, play that back. Nonetheless, the single tinge of profanity at 332 drags it slightly down uh, nearer to our mortal level. And for this reason, I can only give it a 10 out of 10 instead of an 11 out of 10. Anyway, stream Demon Dice and AGR, two artists of all time. This is a, this is a great comment right here. Your eyes are open, so never close them. You'll say <sighs> okay, let's just skip to it. I can't listen to this fucking song. Got it go so much bigger, so everybody's proud of me. Welcome to the Neo Theater. I don't think I'm ready yet. Here it comes. I'm I'm internally cringing because I you can just see like I don't think I'm ready yet. He said the word, you guys. He did it. He used swearing as a way to emphasize the track on a track that's already so surface level and bogged down. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jeremy's... I love you, Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy's singing along. Dude, we fuck... Thank you, Jeremy, for being here. <laughs> Dope Nose by Weezer, it's pretty mid-Weezer fair with a surprisingly great guitar solo, but one of the lines in the second verse has Rivers calling himself a gay slur and saying he can still beat up your mans. Like, it's not even upsetting, it's just confusing. Maladroit? I don't even think I've ever seen this.
Certainly awkward. I guess in the year 2002, this shit wasn't nearly as taboo. It was still bad, but as taboo, maybe not. I, I will say it's pretty bad, but honestly not the worst example I've seen today because I do believe that, like, look, this is back when everyone was still using the word retarded. So, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, it's still fair. Hey, whoa, whoa, I, what, I, what did I say? That wasn't me. I've been framed. Hey, I've been framed. I, I, ow, 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 chill, 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 chill. Call my lawyer. Call my lawyer. I didn't say it. Yo, call my lawyer. Ladies and gentlemen, this this has been a big misunderstanding. I, I was just quoting someone. Um, that that person I was quoting. The homie. Yeah, he got me off them charges. I ain't do shit. Intellect and let the rhythm affect. You lose the inhibition. Follow your intuition. Free your inner soul and break away. Let's get it started in here. Be keeps running, running and running, running and running, running and running and running, running. Yeah, and when I say that word, I don't mean no disrespect. One of the best comments I've ever seen was someone saying how they're mentally, um, it was like, oh, my uncle, you know, he's, got, he's like mentally ill or whatever. This is like his favorite song. We put it on for him and he dances and he loves it. That I, I swear to God, that is, ugh. Let's get retarded in here. And the bass keeps running, running, and running, and running. In this context, there's no disrespect. So when I bust my rhyme, you break your neck. But the fact I can lose the inhibition, follow your intuition, free your inner soul and break away from tradition. Everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. just get into it. Yeah. Get stoked. Get retarded. Get retarded. Yeah. Get retarded. So, the issue is not just with the fact that this song is called Get Retarded. But the fact that it's implied that they say the line immediately beforehand, get stupid, which is implying that the two mean the same thing. So it doesn't even actually understand the context of the word that it's using. Now, obviously, this is a song about getting drunk here. Now, I want to find, ah, here it is. I, here it is. My uncle is mentally disabled, and this has always been his absolute favorite song. Every time we have a family event, I always make sure to request this song to get up and to get him onto the dance floor so he can dance his heart out. He gets so into it, and we always love seeing him so happy. It's the best feeling. <laughs> Yo, cameras? <laughs> I told you, this shit real. It's a real comment. <laughs> Goated uncle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Need a boy, you can cuddle with me all night. Give me one, let me long be my sunlight. Tell me I think that's what I want by Lil Nas X gets a little cheapened by the that's what I fucking want at the end of the chorus. He just says it's so weird to me. I feel like it's uh, like his mouth is stuffed, which I guess in the line with the whole topic of this song, I actually like the clean version better, basically. Funny enough, this is the first example of the day I disagree with, and I'm really happy that we do actually get something that I disagree with. Because I think my exposure to this song was just immediately off the album, and just knowing Lil Nas X and the fact that he isn't like as industry... You know, he isn't, like, industry-groomed. You know what I mean? There is something that feels a bit more real with, uh, with, with him and his songwriting that I just don't feel like is the same instance as something like Pink's fucking perfect. I think that this actually cleanly uh, adds to the song. Also, let me get rid of that. Dude, it's a fucking get drunk party song. It's supposed to be retarded. I don't think it's awkward. Have you been living under a rock for the last, like, 10 years or something? Pause, I wanna, someone said, uh, not gonna lie, the arsler was the hardest thing to stop saying as a kid. Dude, I, I, I learned to stop saying it at age 18. I, I was using that shit, like, frequently enough, and you know why? Cause I was a League of Legends player, that's right. I, hey, 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 whoa, well, I mean, uh, that's, that's, you know, uh, allegedly, allegedly I was a League of Legends player. I, 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 Anyways, I was a raged gamer. I busted the shit out of my laptop. The CD deck stopped working on it um, from hitting it so many times by playing ranked matches. I need to leave. 
and then I would grip on my laptop. What? Boo! Boo! What the fuck? Yo, I got, I got fucked, dude. Come on, that's what I really want? Yo, that shit don't hit the same, dude. It's like an emotional uplifting in this song, you know? Now, what is the difference here where he actually uses, that's what I fucking want, to elevate the song as, a, as an anthemic way. The, the beat cuts out, and it really feels like a moment of him saying, this is really what I want, and it doesn't work the same as like, that's what I really want. No, that's what I fucking want feels more human in this instance. It is very much a case-by-case -case basis, and this is one of those cases where I personally believe that this is significantly better. All right. Let's see what the uh, let's see what the consensus is. Right, Ninety-one percent of people are saying dirty. Okay, I think uh, I think that it's been decided that I'm right, and the hive mindedness and the see my chat's very hive minded. You know, I think it comes to uh, their mental illnesses. So they show up to the stream and they're like, "Yes, I'm so happy to be here." You know, and then I'll, and then I take advantage of their mental illnesses by making polls to make make it seem like everything I say is correct. Okay, it's true. <laughs> You Are Beautiful by James Blunt. His singing style and overall sound of the track make the fucking high line pretty awkward and out of place. I don't know what this is. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I make money off depressed people? Who the hell is James Blunt? Why does this have 700 million streams? My life is brilliant. Another man, but I won't lose no and I don't know what to do. Cause I'll never be with you. I'm a creep, I'm a weirdo. She could see from my face that I was fucking high, and I don't. Okay, that's a decent enough instance where I feel like the fucking high is unnecessary, especially with the tone of this track. Though I'd never really, I gotta say, from this small little piece, I don't really feel like I've taken that dude, this dude, all that seriously. So I don't think it works, but I just don't care enough about the guy or the song to really make much of a comment on it. But it wasn't a match. Wrote some songs about Ricky. Now this is a controversial pick, but thank you next by Ariana Grande. I would love this song if it wasn't for the profanity. It seems like a heartfelt song about past memories, but thankful uh, moving on and finding who you are. It's ruined when Ariana sings, I'm so fucking grateful for my ex. It sounds like it's actually sarcastic and ruins the emotional power of the song for me. The first occurrence is 50 seconds in the lyric video. Thought I'd end up with Sean, but it wasn't a match. Now I listen and laugh. Okay, so I actually disagree with this one, and I'm actually going to chalk it up to, first of all, Ariana Grande's attitude and move towards R&B is already in a style that I feel like works better with profanity. Upon revisiting this song, I actually kind of agree, uh, and both disagree. I have an argument for both. I'd say that it does sound slightly awkward with Ariana Grande saying it, especially since it's out of character for her, and it is sort of a step in this direction. I don't really know how natural it feels. I just sort of feel like the, the whole thing is a little odd, but certainly not the worst example on this list. I'll, uh, anyways, uh, the almost hip-hop-like production here, the, the heavy sub-bass and the very strong vibe, you feel it. 
And when you really feel something, you really fucking feel something. You know what I mean? So that alone, I'm already in a different mindset. But when it comes to the actual emphasis emphasis itself, the fact that Ariana Grande is taking a song like this seriously, I feel like the example of fucking uh, is in a bit of a different context than you described. Uh, I, I just don't feel it the way that you described it. I feel it more as a real uh, statement of feeling something. So honestly... I'm okay with this. I can understand why some people might not love this, but I personally think it works pretty well. I'm so fucking grateful for my ex. And let's not do I that. Can't okay? wait till I get you on for good looking. Wow, look at this. Right underneath the same thing. Oh, here's a good one. Another one that I gave a like to, something that I very much agree with. Suit and Tie by Justin Timberlake. While I do like this song a lot, I always thought that the opening was song awkward or was awkward. Nothing that terribly wrong with the lyrics. I'd be on my suit and tie, shit tied, shit tied. It's just the way it was performed that makes it uh, so that there's long pauses and the shit tied uh, comes off more awkward than, than the Baroque vibe that it's going for. I don't know if it's just me. So this was in the era for me that's very like, um, I don't know. There was like a, a spot in my growing up that was me developing and growing up. and uh, It was my first like real struggle, I'd say, with addiction which I was like severely addicted to playing Roblox to the point of where I would stay up all night listening to the radio and Roblox trading. And this song would be on all the time. However, it would always start from, I can't wait till I get you on the flow good looking. So I had no idea there was an intro. So I decided to play the song at school and that's how I discovered that there was an intro. Funny enough, that seems to be a, a running theme here. Uh, and yes, because of that, I might have a little bit of bias towards this. I've never been a fan of the intro here. So, uh, yeah. Ball so hard. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people making excuses for the intro. I, I feel like once the song actually gets started, you can kind of see why it is a little bit awkward in a total change of pace. I've never listened to this full album, but I imagine the intro probably has something to do with it, like the pitch down vocals. There, there felt like there was something at least a little bit more going on with it. With the classy look and everything. Um, I, I feel like there is some context missing, but in terms of a single with the track, yeah, I think the intro is very weird. I am not a crazy fan of the start. I understand what it's doing, but because I sort of grew up with the way that this song actually starts on the radio, personally, I find the uh, entire intro to be unnecessary, but that's just me. And that's just how it'd be. Oh yeah, that's right. There is actually Jay-Z on this song. Y'all sit back and enjoy the light show. Nothing exceeds like excess. Style guy got from having the best of the best. Tears of distress. Tears on the dress. Try to hide a face with some makeup sex. Uh. God, his moaning in the middle of that shit maybe. Uh, you know what? That that wouldn't be a good example. I'd say, oh. I'm trying to call home all of my change I spent on you. Ladies and gentlemen. It is time for another main event. Payphone by Maroon 5, the one more fucking love song, uh, has always seemed forced and unnecessary to that song. And don't get me started on Wiz Khalifa's verse. It's just so corny and even more forced words that don't match the song whatsoever. This song is a complete disaster. Oh my god, I hate this song. It is agonizing to listen to. I'm at a payphone trying to call home all of my change I spent on you. Look, I will defend some Maroon 5 songs, especially in this era, because again, I was exposed to a lot of this shit for way too long, but man, Payphone is some dog shit. Anyways. Now, this entire song is very sweet, sugary, and stripped back to the most possible, like, empty pop vibe ever. Now, the swearing stands out like a sore fucking thumb. 
it does not work in this instance, especially with how clean everything is. It actually is so awkward here. It's so awkward. <laughs> I'm at a fucking payphone trying to fucking call home. Man, fuck that shit. Uh, yeah, no. Look, it doesn't matter if it makes the song better. I mean, it, honestly, if we're talking technicalities, I don't like this song, but it is better. Why? It's so much better. It matches the tone. I like something that makes me stay in an environment, especially when you're zoning into something, when you're falling into it. This does that enough to where I feel like it fixes what the swearing destroys. An instance where the swearing sucks donkey balls. Okay. Thank you, class. Let's move on. She might be smoking something I see her dancing in the streets Sipping. This summer's gonna hurt like a motherfucker By Maroon 5, we got another song by Maroon 5 Feels like they wanted to seem a little bit more edgier Than they actually are by dropping a fat curse word In both the chorus and the original title To make this song unintentionally hilarious the Song's already pretty hilarious on its own But the chorus is the chew ter cherry on top That's right, two classics in a row Whoops H&M core, but with swearing. Listen to the edited version. Okay, I'm curious. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> A mother raha? A mother who? <laughs> a mother raha? A mother raha? Ah! 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 What the fuck? Bro, you know what? Maybe the explicit version ain't that bad after all, you know? Bring the action. When you hear this in the club, you gotta turn the shit up. Ooh, a good example here. Well I am featuring Britney Spears scream and shout. In the pre-chorus, Britney says, when you hear this in the club, you're gonna turn this shit up. But in the censored version, you're gonna turn turn up. I think the censored version just flows a bit better. I mean they both sound like horse shit, not gonna lie. I've heard this song before. You're gonna turn turn up. Also, <laughs> I've listened to this album before. <laughs> it's not good. I'm sorry, but this if there was ever an album to say it's not good. Also, why is the clean version 30 seconds less than the uh than the explicit version? I'm confused. I will have to investigate. Bring the yeah. action. When you have this in the club, you gotta turn the shit up. You gotta turn the shit up. You gotta turn the shit up. All eyes on us. I don't remember this All being so bad. Us. I remember it like all eyes on us. Not sounding so awkward. See the boys in the club, they watching us. And scream and shout and let it out. We say this is an extremely oh, popular yeah, song, by the way. It's got to have at least yeah, 550 oh, million yeah, streams. Now, now, with Will I am in Britney, bitch. I personally think it's just kind of a very tame club song designed to be a club song. I like other club songs better than this. Uh, I just feel like it doesn't really hit the same as like a song like, uh, oh, come on. Listen to this track, bitch. Yeah, the way you're moving, yeah. you got me in a 
Now, I'm telling you, it's a completely different energy. That's why I fuck with this shit. All right, goes hard. It goes hard as a motherfucker. When you have this in the club, you gotta check turn it up. You gotta check turn it up. You gotta check turn it up. When we up in the club, all eyes on us. All eyes on us. They're watching. You know, I know it's very easy to quickly laugh at this cut sounding a bit awkward, but admittingly, because this song already sounds like an AI singing it, I actually think that it sells it better. Funny enough. Um, I actually agree. See, I, I'm not here to... I don't want to just, like... I actually think that, like, it's it's easy to say that it's less smooth, but I believe that that rigidness actually makes the song work better. Funny enough. As I think that, you're gonna turn the shit up, sounds like an awkward demand, but rather, you're gonna turn turn it up, sounds like a, a weird, glitchy, almost uh, dystopian announcement. I personally like this better. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, no, the cover of this album is terrible. No, it, it really is. It's one of it's like actually one of my least favorite like album covers ever. It actually like the the crop on his head looks so incredibly awkward. <laughs> like it looks so unnatural. Why does his neck look like <laughs> it looks so <laughs> it looks like a bowling pin. <laughs> <laughs> Why the long face? <laughs> Alright, looks like the dirty version. People are saying the dirty. I'm, an, I'm, I'm happy to be in the demographic that kind of likes the clean version a bit better. Tell me why by Will Smith's Lost and Found. Do you remember that famous Eminem line? Will Smith don't got a cuss in his raps to sell records. Well, I do, so fuck him and fuck you too. Sometime after that, Will Smith didn't drag, uh, did in fact drop an F-bomb in his song. However, he did not want to commit to it. The sequence builds up around 2.14 into the song, and the payload is delivered at 2.46. For the record, there's no different version of this song. Wow, that's, that's edgy. Anyways, this is Will Smith's edgy album. If you guys remember, I saw Tom in the Shadows video on this recently. You donated a song off this album? I remember that, yeah. It was a terrible song. Wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't wanna know more. Why is the bomb always getting the last word? Did her uncles have to molest her? And why did all them cops have to be shooting to kill? And why did all them priests have to act so ill? Tell me why did James Bird Jr. had to be touched? Tell me why did Malcolm and Martin depart from us? Tell me why did the sniper make that little boy shoot? And why is human life always denied for loot? Tell me why did Mandela have to live in the cage? Why did my brother Sterling have to die at that age? Tell me why did Reginald and Benny deserve his fate? <laughs> All right, so there's something very wrong about this. This is a wonderful example, by the way. Because what he's talking about is extremely serious, and he believes that this is the moment. The moment to make it about himself. By swearing, finally, a career-defining moment. Now, this makes me understand that this is about him and not actually what he's talking about. And that's what destroys the illusion for me. Him swearing here is extremely awkward because it was premeditated, it was bleeped out, and it becomes the center of attention. Eh. No. Oh, that's my God. Jack, no, that's, that? please, don't play it back again. Take his soul. Oh, 
See, look. <laughs> okay, well, now I have to wait for people to stop typing muted so I can continue speaking. So, um, I'm muted. Yeah? Still muted? I think Brad's muted. How many fingers am I holding up if I'm muted, huh? Answer that. All right? Exactly. All right? <laughs> All right. Now that they're distracted doing that. CeeLo Green with Fuck You made me question everything when I heard the explicit version for the first time. As a kid, I hated swearing. I was terrified of it. I had trauma with it. Um, when I first heard this song, I was at a neighbor's uh, party that they were throwing, and I was at the pool. Now, I had heard this song many times on the radio as Forget You. And I was like, oh, this is a catchy, sweet little track. I like this. I wonder when this came out. It sounded kind of classic and old. And then I heard the song Fuck You. Oh my god, the whiplash. To go from the, the, the radio version to the actual song called Fuck You is insane. This is one of the most explicit pop songs I have heard ever. Like, you, you cannot tell which one is the original if you didn't know beforehand. I'm just saying. So, with that being... Now, it's different when you actually know what to look for. If you're listening to this on the radio and you're just sort of vibing along with it, you would not believe what this song actually is. And I'm sorry, and I believe it's like, oh, no. Context matters. Now, listen to the song, Fuck You. It is literally, it is insane. The tone is completely different, yet it's the same exact song. I know it's a contradiction because of how happy it sounds, but the lyrics are so down. Camo Goes Blamo says, I hate being white. Chat moving slow enough for me to see some shit like that. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna applaud that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right, so let me give you my opinion on this song. And I'm going to say something that I have not said yet this video. It may shock some people. I love both versions. I feel like both versions have their place. I feel like you have one that's in a very extreme angle on one side and one that's on a very extreme angle on another side. And it's taken me some time to see this. Forget You, I think, moves slowly and it moves smoothly with the song. Fuck You is more blunt and I think it works in terms of making this song punchier. I think they both work in their own way. You have the smoother version, which is the clean version, and then you have the more punchy, po poignant, and it, I'd say emotionally powerful version, which is Fuck You. So, I think both are great. I think both are worth a like, in fact. I'd be okay with hearing either one and then being surprised by which one is on. Um, it's it, Oh, it's so well produced, too. I mean, it just sounds fantastic. Like, the song sounds great, so. That's another thing. It's like, I, I love the sound of this track. Plus, it's so catchy. There's so many memorable lines. It's a good-ass song.
Anyways, I made it way, 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 want to hurt me so bad, so bad, so bad. I tried to tell my mama, but she said that this is one for your dad. I said, well, why? Why? Why, lady? I love you. I still love you. Oh, I see you driving around town with a girl I love. To my own performance, I give that a red headphones. Anyways, this shit catchy as a motherfucker, dude. What can I say? <laughs> I don't need no auto tune. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Get a real job, boy. Don't be a fool. Burn that guitar. You can never be a anything. Med uh, what is this? I I'm going to click on this because I mean it's only got eight likes, but this motherfucker, this this shit. Okay. Anything, Headley, uh, 36 and a bunch of different timestamps. This example might fall on deaf ears because the song was exclusively played to a ton of Canadian radio stations, but I've always hated the song and recently discovering that there was a worse, unclean version this whole time has ruined what little bit of nostalgia I've had for it. Already I found this song irritating because lyrically it sounds like it was written for children, but mixing that with super unnecessary F-bombs in the chorus not only fucks with the tone of the song, but the replacement in the clean version literally sounds way better by having more syllables. In the clean version, the lyric, don't forget that, and maybe it's just my nostalgia and bias speaking, but it fits the beat way better for me. And don't even get me started on where the lead singer changes it up and says the F-bomb uh, says the F-bomb himself in the last chorus. Either way, this song sucks, adding forced profanity in the chorus. I'm interested in this. I want to know what the fuck this is. I want to listen to the clean version first. I want to have the experience you did. Just a young gun with a quick fuse. Honda, sell the Honda. I see. If they tell you that you can't, you can shove it in their face. I can, I can, I can, so. Okay, so yeah, no, this is exactly like you described it. It sounds like it's a song made for children. So, the swearing in this song is obscene. I mean, my God, it literally is like, you could go be whatever you want, kid. Ha ha, fuck that. Don't listen to them. Fuck that. This is a tonal nightmare. And people are mentioning AJR. I see it because it's the exact same thing where it has a message that seems like it's for kids, but language that seems like it's for adults. I'm terrified to listen to the explicit version because this already sucks as is. <laughs> This song is, uh, is, is, I, I, see, I haven't really been rating songs, but if I had to rate this song, I would give it, say, zero plus to a one minus, probably more of a one minus. I, I don't think that it's the worst thing I've heard, but it checks off a lot of boxes of things that would make me kill somebody if this was in the background. And of course, you know, <laughs> it's like, hey, 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 hey. Oh, chill. Okay, it was a metaphor. It's a metaphor for how I'm feeling in the current situation of what I might do in a specific situation. If the song was on in the background, I would never hurt a child. I would never hurt a child. Wait, when did it become about children? Hold on, wait, wait. I, I've been. Uh, this I got murder on my mind. Honestly, most of the songs on Sour by Olivia Rodrigo, uh, she doesn't do it a crazy amount of times, but whenever she does it on the album, it feels like a little kid getting to say a bad word for the first time. And guess what? And guess what? That's why I think it works.
Case closed. Olivia Rodrigo is basically a kid. The album is a salty breakup album. It's angsty as fuck. I think that it works better here than many other cases of people doing this shit because it does not feel as watered down and corporate. Honestly, I prefer the clean version of her songs, which is pretty unusual for me. It happens throughout the album, but that one that sticks out is the bridge of Deja Vu, Strawberry Ice Cream in Malibu. Don't act like we didn't do that shit too. smooth it rolls off the tongue i'm sorry but like don't don't act like we didn't do that shit too sounds like something you would say in a normal sentence especially with the way that it's just sort of spoken like that the frustration through it speaking a lot of words out like you know quickly it's that's about as smooth and natural as you can get terrible example you should feel bad and you should go work at mcdonald's I like Olivia Rodrigo. I feel like the, the times where she swears it feels extremely natural and I will defend her to the ends of the earth until she eventually picks up my calls. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's bringing up this shit. No, 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 no. I don't even know what this is, but no, 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 no. No, this is not happening. This is not real. Please. Oh, 69mega.com, new AI di dating disrupts an industry. Yo, the industry, you'll never be the same again after 69mega. Yo, the industry's changed forever. Yo, that's crazy. Here's a weird cut, but Halsey's cover of Justin Bieber's Love Yourself. Let me guess. She says you should go and fuck yourself. Let me guess. Yep, she changes it to fuck yourself. Um, what a shock. All those times that you've made me feel weak. And what's wrong with that? All the times that you rained on my parade. And all the clubs you get and using my name. And I didn't want to write a song. Cause I didn't Why is she singing off? Cause she's Halsey, dude. The fuck you expect here, huh? What, you expect... Fucking Frank Sinatra, you you expect uh, Alicia Keys? I don't know what the hell you expect. It's fucking Halsey. I've been saying this shit for years. Am I? I feel like the least surprised person in the room right now. I want everyone thinking I still care. I don't, but you still hit my phone up. My mama don't like you, and she likes everyone. It's so awkward, dude. I never lied to admit that I was wrong. Didn't see what's going. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, look at this comment. This is a good comment. She's not like other girls. She's different. She sings in cursive. Bruh. <laughs> Come bed is sleeping on my own. Cause if you like the way you look that much, oh baby, you should go and fuck yourself. And if you think that I'm still holding on to something, you should go and fuck yourself. Oh my god, that's bad, dude. And listen, okay? I actually like the replacement of Love Yourself in the song because I actually feel like I'm... Look, and you guys, you better tell me based when I say this, okay? You should go and love yourself is a more sour way of saying this shit than the very angsty you should go and fuck yourself. If anything, I feel like it hits harder because it's like saying, yeah, I could just peacefully put this in a song like this to tell you to go fuck yourself and I don't even have to lift up a pinky to do it. It's some it's based as shit. I'm telling you, dude. So, Halsey, of course, can't see that. He's too close-minded on that matter. It's gotta be edgy. That's in a brand. Just saying. Just saying. Okay. Ooh, I got a body full of liquor with a cold king. Ooh, Gorilla by Bruno Mars. The original lyric is screaming, give it to me, baby, give it to me, motherfucker. However, on the radio instead, Bruno Mars swearing, they have him say, woo, or some random animal sounds. <laughs> it's the goofiest thing ever. What? Ooh, I got a body full of liquor with a cold king.
a killer, you'll be banging on my chest, bang, bang, gorilla. Look, I love this chat, I love this community, but every song that's about having sex is not all of a sudden a rapey song, and not every single song about missing a girl is an incel core song. Please, for the love of God, this shit is so hard to watch, it makes me look away from my chat, it's so cringe. Get some pussy. Alright. Also, touch some grass and get some sunshine while you're at it. My God, this song is clearly about having consensual gorilla sex, okay? Jesus. Yeah! What is this, the Rainforest Cafe, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was the most awkward replacement I've ever heard in my life. Uh, and you're screaming, give it to me, baby, give it to me, Now, I want to hear how it sounds. You know what? I don't, I'll be, I'm going to be honest. I don't even give a shit how it sounds in the original. All songs about having dirty sex. Like, at the end of the day, to say the word fuck in this song would be a disservice to this track. I mean, it's already awkward as is. We'll be fucking like gorillas. What, what is he implying when he's saying he's, he's pulling your hair and he wants you to call him daddy? What, what am I supposed to pull from that? You know what I mean? If anything, this is the most real and raw use of the word you can possibly have. Doesn't make the song less awkward, though. Just sort of exists in it. All right. Limp Biscuit Rolling uses the F bomb in, a, in in very unnecessary ways. So where the fuck you at, punk? Shut the fuck up and back the fuck up while we fuck this track up. That's kind of fire, though. Not gonna lie. Not, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Let's let's see. <laughs> Give it to me, Mother Thunder. Dude, it's like, it's like if Rage Against the Machine had dignity. Dude, this track is fin- I'm sorry, but this, this chorus is so fucking good. Did, did, did it happen yet? I wasn't even paying attention. People we don't give a fuck, call them players. Bro, this song fucking slaps. I didn't even notice if it did happen. This is fire. Dude, what can I say? Look, Limp Biscuit, kind of trash, you know what I mean? But, this is the right level of trash. This shit kind of slap. I'm giving it a smiley ball. Hey, look, I've kind of hated everything I've heard from Limp Biscuit, but not gonna lie, this this chorus does exactly what's supposed to. Be. I've been a throw up the sex in a. Uh huh. This is a pretty recent one, but the line "pineapple juice I gave her sweet, sweet, sweet semen in first class" by Jack Harlow made my skin crawl. Throw up the sex in a. Keep dreaming. Pineapple juice I give her sweet, sweet, sweet semen. I know what they like, so I just keep cheesing. Hard drive full of heat seeking. Trying to come to San Diego's Jack. <laughs> Gonna be rapping for Jesus, yo. Yo, yo, what up? You already know who it is, most fly MC. Rapping for Jesus. I don't agree with this one. I'm gonna be honest, rapping for Jesus is probably the least awkward use of swearing I might have ever heard, okay? Start. Kids on the street, then you gotta do a rap to a hip-hop beat. So I gave my sermon an urban kick. My rhymes are fly, my beats are sick. My crew is big and it keeps getting bigger. That's cause Jesus Christ is my... Cheryl, I don't care, clean. One of my least favorite trends in music is putting unnecessary awkward swears into already very basic and otherwise generic kid-friendly pop songs. This was unfortunately very overplayed in the UK in the 2014 version, uh, radio version. It's the only version I would hear censored out a swear word during the chorus. Um, didn't need to be there. Mostly kids were listening to it. 
Why does this sound so familiar? Cheryl, I don't care. These chords. <laughs> How are you not going to get sued for plagiarism? Maybe because no one can identify it, it's so identifiable. What a sick joke! Baby, yeah! Oh, me! I'm with my baby, yeah! Disappear! Making me feel like I'm doing somebody! Yeah, no. Look at that. It's oh. so generic. It's so generic that the most generic Ed Sheeran song of all time can be seen as a copy of this. Dude, I mean, you've got to be shitting me. You can't make this stuff up. That's terrible. Oh, yeah, anyways, the swearing is... Honestly, I don't even know if the swearing is that awkward because the whole song sucks. This... The story of OJ by Jay Z? While the swearing is completely. Uh, Charlie. Um, hey, Charlie. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this one. <laughs> uh. <gasps> there's a clean version? Sing along. Hey! Let's not. Oh yeah, no, this beat's incredible. When this shit came out, dude, this was like, oh my god. Light jigger, dark jigger, faux jigger, real jigger, rich jigger, pole jigger, house jigger, feel jigger, still jigger. My name is still jigger. Hmm. I like that second one. Good jigger. <laughs> OJ like, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Okay, house nigga, don't fuck with me. I'm a feel nigga with Sean Cutlery. I gotta say, I, you know. Light nigga, dark nigga, faux nigga, real nigga. Rich nigga, poor nigga, house nigga, feel nigga. Still nigga. Now, let's be honest here, all right? This is a song about awkward swearing. There is not a single moment of that that is awkward. It is so slick, it is so smooth, and he gets the point across. In my opinion, brilliant. That's just me, your average hip hop listener. Of course, you know, when I say that, I mean uh, one of the white, one of the white heads at the uh, Kendrick Lamar show. All right, next. Get cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. Big herd throbbing cocks wanting to be. <laughs> Ram Ranch by Grant McDonald is made pretty awkward by all the profanity. Why not? Those videos are, we're out of examples anyways, you know? 18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. Big herd throbbing cocks wanting to be sucked. Hot herd buff cowboys, their cocks throbbing hard. 18 more wild cowboys out in the yard. Panic at the Disco's cover of Karma Police at 208. Not sure if this counts since it's a cover, but Brandon yelling... When you fuck with us rather than when you mess with us. I remember someone sending this in recently, and I think I had the controversial opinion of not giving a shit. That's right. I didn't really care they did this. Like, at all. So, curious. Yes, this is real. This next song is by a band called Radiohead. You might have known him from the song called Creep. I'm sorry, but after that new Panic at the Disco album, it's hard to hate on this shit. Like, it, it really is. It's, let's be honest, okay? After hearing that new album, this motherfucker is Tom York, okay? This, motherf this motherfucker could do a singing battle against Tom York compared to that new shit he dropped, all right? At least it's on key. Everybody, when you fuck with us. 
Now, controversial take. Someone said it that this song is too good to, to, to ruin. I agree. And I feel like with the edginess that Panic at the Disco brings, they take a song that is about existentialism, looking at the world as it's fucked up, and they turn it into a different song that's existentialism as the world is fucked up. Now, I really don't think that this is the worst you could possibly have this be. In fact, after hearing many covers by people like Machine Gun Kelly, I'd say that this is actually on the upper echelon of this kind of crap. I really don't think that this is as bad, especially with the context of, one, it's Panic at the Disco. You know me. You know I hate, like, 90% of the things these motherfuckers do. And I'm defending this shit. Because, t it tone-wise, tone is it really that off? No. So, I'm just saying. <laughs> MGK Karma Police? Alright, you guys. Now, now you guys are the ones being, uh... Be careful who you say that to, okay? I'm just saying. You, you might end up, you know. Oh, please, no. Now, let me look at you. Talk about yourself. By you by Paul McCartney. Not only is it a bad attempt by a 76 year old man to make an Imagine Dragons type pop song, but the chorus is I just want to fuck you truly kills the song and makes it truly awkward, especially for the hugely acclaimed and influential musician like Paul. Ugh. <sighs> I don't think I've ever heard this. Baby now, let me look at you, talk about yourself, try to tell the truth. I want a love that's so proud and real, you make me want to go out and steal, I just want to find Paul McCartney is rolling in his grave right now, okay? You know what I'm saying? That's a soul stealer. Stop, stop, but I gotta stick your mind. Listen, look at this. Look at these lyrics. You're telling me fuck is the problem with this song? You let me violate you. You let me desecrate you. I wanna pet you like an animal. Help me get away from myself. I wanna fuck you like an animal. I wanna feel funny inside. Sisters in blood. You get me closer to God. Chocolate starfish, yeah. You genuinely like this more than the original probably because it's such a funky tune and yet the lyrics are fucked up. I mean, that's the thing though is I get everything I need from the original. It's a fun remix and I like it. But better than the original? The original in my opinion is near perfect, if not perfect. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of repeats. Um, Coldplay, People of the Pride. Oh, shit! This one got buried. Now, if you end up using this, I recommend looking at guns from Coldplay. It's much... Eh, no. People of the Pride is already an annoying, pretentious Home Depot wannabe, <laughs> but in addition to the cursing, just makes it even more cringeworthy. This song's a classic. This song's a classic! Here it comes. The Ford Thunder is the best car in America, only coming to you locally in truck temper. The Ford Thunder can fight against storms, apparently. It's a good car. The Ford Thunder. Get it now, or get it somehow. It's trucked over, baby. You need a truck that's built tough like you. A 
talking the new Ford Thunder. The Ford Thunder comes with a 150 horsepower engine for your kids to be safe. It also comes with crash-proof testing. The full yeah, no. The song is terrible, and I agree. The swearing on this song, especially since it's not taking an actual stand on anything. Um, seriously, though, like this, this song, people are like, why did you hate the new Muse album so much? People of the Pride. It's the same fucking shit, and you can't convince me otherwise. You cannot convince me that this is any different than the new Muse album. I'm waiting. Convince me. Tell me, tell me how this is different. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's going to be it for this stream and for this recording. I'm going to edit this video and we're going to uh, do, you know, take things one step at a time afterwards. This is an amazing stream. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, thank you for all the great suggestions. Hopefully by the time this video is out, I'm going to have a new topic for you guys, which might actually be, uh, funny enough, good instances of profanity in music. So if you guys want to go out and start looking for that, uh, go ahead and start searching. So thank you guys so much. Love you all. Have a good rest of your day. You always count on blood on the dance floor for awkward cursing. <laughs> they have a lot of awkward everything. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.